God bless those LDS Jesus videos that I have seen where it's a verse by verse, uh, miracle by miracle account. And it's the only thing you hear are, are, are direct quotes from the Bible. Like once I've seen it once, I, it doesn't move me. How come every time I've watched Jesus projects and I love Jesus and I've read the Bible many times and I'm, I've studied scriptures all my life. Why don't I love Jesus as much when I watch, when I watch him on screen? Like he seems boring. He seems like not very, like not, not the kind of guy who would engender uh, thousands of people to follow him around. Um, so the show is a bit of a response to that. Briefly, this may be a tangent, but uh, I was in Israel a few years ago when I was um, doing research for the show. This is before we had even written a script. And I was standing there in that synagogue and I had what's probably happened to me three or four times in my life, maybe five, um, where I really felt God speaking to me, like laying something very strong on my heart. Mm -hmm. And for us old school Baptists, uh, you know, we, we, we don't normally hear God's voice. Uh, we leave that to the charismatics. So we, we typically like don't hear from the Lord uh, very explicitly. But this was yeah. one of those moments where I felt really like God laying it on my heart. And I felt that God was laying on my heart that in, in several years, the chosen was going to be what people thought of when they pictured the disciples, like when they mm -hmm. pictured Jesus's people, the people who were around Jesus. Because up till that point, there's been movies and miniseries about Jesus, but like you don't have anything in your mind specifically about Simon Peter or Mary Magdalene. Like there's mm -hmm. no visual in your mind. And I felt like God was saying like, this is going to be the definitive portrayal of my people. And this is what people are going to think of around the world when they think of my people. And I'm not gonna let you screw it up. 